Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, much appreciated. Um, so my presentation today will be a little bit more information about an automated method for extracting um, vitamin A, E, D, and cholesterol from one single assay um, through, the through a um, automation of a classic method. So a little bit more detail about this. Um, as you know, the classic method for this um, analysis is solution delivery into typically um, saponification vessels. And so these can be um, Erlenmeyer beakers or they can be um, uh, reflux condensed containers. All this will be automated in the top portion of this automated instrument. And it's controlled by nitrogen purging, um, automated mixing, and in a light protected environment. Um, next up is a complicated time consuming glassware intensive um, extraction method. This is replaced in the automated SPE method by SPE columns. Um, through this, we sidestep the problems that you have with emulsions and all the washing of glassware, as this is a disposable component of the method. Uh, next up is uh, solvent evaporation, very similar to uh, Rotovap. Instead, it's not vacuum, it's uh, positive pressure of nitrogen flow. Now this method, this um, automated SPE method will replace three steps of the classic methods, as I've mentioned, the digestion, the extraction, and the evaporation of solvent. And generally, because this is a complete extraction and it's in a continuous nitrogen environment, we don't have to lean as heavily on internal standards. It's a full extraction. And also this instrument will use much less sample and still we get the accuracy and precision or surpass when compared to the classical methods. So as you can see there on the screen, on the balance is a, an example of a digestion vessel. The digestion vessel can be put directly onto the balance. The sample can be weighed into the vessel and it then is placed in the instrument. The port that you see on the side of the vessel with a red cap can then be used to insert internal standards or any other small additions needed for this method. Next, it will digest in a, according to a programmed method. Um, the base method is 75 degrees C for 45 minutes under nitrogen environment, um, pressure release and um, continual mixing. After that stage, the liquid will, the saponification solution will filter through the bottom of the digestion vessel, which has a port, uh, onto the SPE column. The SPE column then is a silica-based sorbent that will hold up the aqueous component of the saponification solution. Uh, the instrument will then automatically fill into the digestion vessel the solvent from reservoirs that sits to the right, bottom right of the, of the instrument. Um, we will um, extract by a few small additions and then larger hexane additions to wash the analyte with the solvent into the round bottom flasks at the bottom of the instrument. So here in the recovery oven area, we evaporate the solvent while all the aqueous components of the sponification solution is held up on the SPE columns. Uh, as you can imagine, we tested this instrument for all kinds of foods and feeds and have found um, no issues in the process with filtration, with mixing, with recovery and precision, even at smaller sample sizes than you typically could use in classic methods. So we, according to the AOAC food triangle, we can analyze high fat, high protein, high carb content without any problems. Just a little more details about accuracy and precision. As I've mentioned before, um, the instrument can utilize smaller sample sizes and still maintain precision and accuracy compared to the classic liquid-liquid method. Um, this slide shows a comparison of vitamin A and E of the um, actual recoveries when compared to the classic liquid-liquid method. Uh, based on some of our collaborators' data of uh, lab control samples and certified reference materials. Then we can look at the precision where we can see similar or improved precision even with smaller sample sizes. 
Same goes for cholesterol and vitamin D. Um, we can see that um, recovery is comparable, if not improved, on our method. And then we can also see that precision is improved for vitamin D and cholesterol compared to a classic liquid-liquid extraction method. So another measure of um, that method validation is looking at matrix spikes. And um, the matrix spikes for vitamin A in infant formula was between 98 and um, 104%. And then if we look at vitamin E in infant formula, it was between 90 and 110% which is, um, uh, uh, which is a, a decent um, recovery and accuracy. When we look at another lab control sample, a typical serial sample, we see recoveries from 90 to 100% for vitamin A and then recoveries for vitamin E from 96 to 108%. And this is also, um, a very good recovery, especially when these matrices are spiked at levels of um, incurred residue times one, times two, times five, and even times 10 for um, infant formula. With this automated method, automated SPE method, we can see when we look at a GC chromatogram, we can see the top chromatogram compared to the bottom chromatogram of the same sample, a half a gram of infant formula, that was extracted either the top chromatogram by the automated SPE method or the lower one with a classic liquid liquid extraction. We can see how much cleaner the extract is when um, run on the automated SPE method compared to liquid liquid. Then for vitamin D analysis, most often um, customers will use mass spec for detection and that would be a very uh, low limit of quantitation and easily detectable. But even customers who run HPLC with UV detection can clearly see the peaks on a one, almost 1 1.3 gram infant formula sample at seven micrograms per 100 grams for the, the difference between the vitamin D2 in san, internal standard peak compared to the inherent vitamin D3 recovery. Um, so this, sam this instrument allows, because it is so tightly controlled, um, allows for all kinds of different research projects and targeted research. Here is just one example where we looked at comparing the AFCO proficiency testing um, data points with samples that are three to five grams of a sample, which is really a very small sample size for uh, animal feed. And still we can see how our value, how the automated method compares very well with the AFCO labs methods. Um, that was a quick run through of the instrument. Um, and this is my final slide, but I do wanna say also the software that we have on this um, automated instrument called the ANCOM Flex is modular. And so you can combine any method that needs a digestion in the upper portion, filtration, mixing, nitrogen environment with a separation phase in the middle and then an evaporation of solvent at the bottom. Um, so this instrument went to market in the beginning of this year, um, and we are shortly releasing it to the market for uh, fat hydrolysis, which uses the same instrument, but uh, different temperatures and different solutions to achieve hydrolysis of fat um, from any sample so that fat can be recovered for a, a future um, fatty acid profiling, as an example. Um, uh, thanks, Bruce. That, that was the final slide. I can answer questions. Hi, Marlene. Uh, great presentation. A uh, question came in. It says, uh, <clears throat> I am interested in the possibilities of Industry 4.0. Could this analytical technology be incorporated with computer slash AL uh, in automation to control production? Um, I'm not sure that I understand the question. It's, a, it's an automated instrument. And so um, exactly what do you mean by AI? Uh, it says, could this analytical technology be incorporated with computers, AI, and automation to control production? I guess. Uh, 
What uh, I can just speak to that a little bit, Bruce. I'm not exactly sure about the question, but I can give sure. some more detail. Um, what this instrument allows is it will free up technicians for a runtime is about two hours that you can saponify and analyze, not analyze, can um, isolate these fat soluble vitamins in one run. And so the um, user or the lab tech will weigh the sample, put it in the instrument and walk away. After that two hours, they can come back and then use the isolate in the round bottom flasks to then shoot it on the HPLC or the GC for, for um, um, cholesterol analysis. And it does four samples at one time too, correct? It does correct? four samples at one time. That's great. Um, I had a question. It says, uh, what I put down is, it, it sounds like the machine offers many benefits. Uh, when you look at it, what drives the, the end user to purchase it? Is it the less solvent that's used or the labor costs? Or what, what, what do you find as the, the major interest in the industry for it? Um, it does seem to be mostly throughput. Uh, because it's automated and it saves on tuition, uh, tuition uh, technician time, um, it's, it's multiple things. What we have found often, uh, what we hear from industry that we didn't necessarily think about is the ergonomics of shaking a biphase and how uh, the labs are happy that the technicians do not have to continually shake biphases. Mm -hmm. So it's saving technician shoulders. It's right. um, improving throughput. It's using about a third of the solvent that you typically would for a classic uh, liquid liquid. Mm -hmm. um, so in, there are a few different uh, benefits, even you know, with emulsions that you typically get with the biphase extractions, there you can certainly lose um, analyte in the separation phase, whereas the SPE technology, it's, it's not a concern at all. Okay. Um, does your company, I know you kind of answered this a little bit, but uh, does your company have plans to do more with this automated method of analysis other than vitamins and cholesterol? I know you talked about high, fat hydrolysis in your presentation, but do you see other applications for it in there? Uh, we do. Um, the beginning was the vitamin analysis and cholesterol. Um, the next step would be um, acid hydrolysis. So it's a HCL in the um, digestion of an component, a small SPE column, and then the isolation of the fat. But what I did not mention is, I did mention that the methods are modular in sequence. So you could, um, on the HMI screen, line up modules, you know, heat module, a drain module, a mix module, etc. So this is an excellent tool for method development where you can actually say, I want to do an amylase treatment for something. I put the amylase through the port or through the solution delivery system. It's, it's a good research tool, both for method development and even for academic institutions to then see how they can develop new methods by themselves. Okay, perfect. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have. Uh, it was a great presentation. It looks like a really nice machine that you guys have there. So I'm sure it'll be very successful out in the field as you uh, go out and promote it. Yep, thanks Bruce. Okay, our next speaker uh, is going to be uh, Dr. Kito Akuda. Uh, he's a, a PhD for uh, technical service team lead at Am Amano Enzyme USA uh, with 12 years of experience in R&D. Uh, he received his PhD in bioagricultural sciences from Nag Nagoya University in 2013. His professional interests focus on how to add value to food sector by enzymes and his current projects include technical support for his customers. Uh, the description of his uh, presentation will be talking about enzymatic modification has a lot of potential as a green technology. Uh, protein glutaminase, uh, Amano 500, PG 500, especially improves the solubility of a plant proteins by deamidating, de I'm very sorry, that's a tough word for me, uh, the amino group of glutamine residues uh, in protein. PG 500 opens a whole new array of product options in plant-based applications. Uh, so with that, uh, and his pe presentation again is improvement of plant protein functionality by protein glutaminase. Uh, with that, uh, Dr. Akuto, uh, take it away. Uh, 